18th century political formations part 1 the crisis in the empire of the mughals if you look at these maps closely you will see something significant happening in the subcontinent during the first half of the 18th century. Notice how the boundaries of the Mughal Empire were reshaped by the emergence of a number of independent kingdoms. By 1765, notice how another power, the British, had successfully grabbed major chunks of territory in eastern India. What these maps tell us is that the political conditions in 18th century India had changed quite dramatically and within a relatively short span of time. In this module, we will read about the emergence of new political groups in the subcontinent during the first half of the 18th century. Roughly from 1707, when Aurangzeb died, till the Third Battle of Panipat in 1761. The Mughal Empire reached its greatest extent in the times of Aurangzeb, but it collapsed after his death. The major cause of decline was the lack of worthy and competent successors to Aurangzeb. The successive rulers after Aurangzeb were weak, and lacked character, motivation, and commitment to rule the empire strongly. The absence of any definite law of succession was another important factor. The war of succession with his brother Darashiko not only led to bitterness, bloodshed and loss of money and prestige of the empire over a period of time, but to its eventual downfall. During the time of Aurangzeb, the Mughal Empire had reached its maximum size. This vast area had become impossible for one ruler to control and govern from one center. It was during the later Mughals that Deccan, Bengal, Bihar and Orissa declared their independence. In some of these areas, the nobles appointed as governors, which were called Subedars, had become very powerful and came to control the revenue and military administration or Divani and Fojdari. The raids by Nadir Shah and repeated invasions of Ahmad Shah Abdali resulted in further weakening of the empire. Nadir Shah's invasion broke the Mughal Empire. 